I am Jeff Nally, and I'm glad to be with you here the last before lunch. I'll tell you that we are moving ourselves on a time frame here that we're going to hear. We've got the opportunity today to hear from the big four, uh, from the House Agriculture Committee and from the Senate Agriculture Committee, and also having a visit today uh, with our Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack. It's my pleasure this morning to uh, introduce Representative David Scott of Georgia. He'll be joining us uh, by Zoom, and there you are, Congressman. Thanks for being here. He was approved by the Democratic Caucus to serve as the first African American chairman of the House Ag Committee during the 117th and now is ranking member here at the 118th. He played a key role in ushering uh, in the last three farm bills. A man not afraid to roll up his sleeves and get, uh, get the work done as he did when he was a young man on the uh, family farm. Uh, Congressman, I want to begin the, our conversation this morning with an area that I know that is important to you, and that's nutrition. And just two comments from news before we get to that. Last week, Senate Ag Chairwoman Debbie Stabenow spoke out and said, if you're going to cut the SNAP program, we're going to cut all programs. And then this morning in, in AgriPulse Daybreak, former Deputy Secretary Kathleen Merrigan said this farm bill is going to be all about the money. So. My question for you to start here this morning, what are your thoughts toward adding work requirements? And at the same time, what makes the SNAP program the center of attention for this bill and so important to you, sir? Well, thank you very much, uh, Jeff. It's good being with you. And uh, let's first talk about SNAP. Every farm bill, it comes up. It's almost like uh, it's an enemy because it's the same thing. In 2018, on the Trump's farm bill, we had the same thing. Now we got Dusty Johnson in, in uh, my own ad committee coming up with this proposal. Listen, we need to finally accept SNAP and right now, the last thing we need to be talking about is getting, trying to get people off of SNAP. We, if, if what these rather extreme Republicans want to do is to take SNAP and, and try to say they want to put strict worker requirements. We already have worker requirements. Currently, SNAP has a time limit on benefits that prevent non-disabled adults between the ages of 18 and 49 without children at home. We call them a bars. They cannot receive SNAP more than three months every three years unless they are working at least 20 hours per month. Let me repeat that. You can only get food three months every three years if you're not working. This is an extremely strict requirement. Look, we're faced with difficult times. Our two major groups, those who are producing the food, are going out of business at a rapid rate. We're losing 17,000 small rancher farmers every year. Uh, many, millions of them, hundreds of them have not have made a profit in five years. I'm not making this up. It was in a great article by the New York Times. We have got to look at our system and provide help and strength where the need is the greatest. And it is helping keep our small family farms in business. What's going to happen? Are we going to wind up with big operations doing the farming if we do not move to put a safety net with our farmers? That's what I'm working on. And I will tell you this. There's no way that we are going to accept any cuts in this program. I mean, we're talking about millions of you all at AgriPulse pointed that out already. 
we will lose uh, 1.5 million. That's what you said. And then the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities said much more, 3 million parents and grandparents. And then when you put the children involved, 4 million. So enough said about this cuts to SNAP. We need to now help the people who are producing the food. And we are going to put a safety net in where we have an insurance program up front. And then we're going to provide Tom Vilsack with enough money to help increase marketing opportunities. And that will be what we will do. Mr. Chairman, one more question if we can. What policies, I know you've been outspoken in support of mid-size and small producers in the country. What policies do you see in the 23 bill and in bills to come to help producers navigate these challenging times? Higher input costs, higher interest rates. Well, first of all, we've got to be putting the resources where they need them the most. And that is directly to our farmers. They have got to have the, <clears throat> excuse me, necessary funding to be able to handle these difficulties. We're in difficult times. Inflation is running rampant. Another thing, our producers are moving on in age. We need to put and, and, and bring in a new generation of farmers, of producers, in a difficult time with science and technology taking over, we need to also reinvigorate our soil. They don't call it Mother Earth for nothing. That the start of the food supply chain is Mother Earth. And so there's so many things that we're working on to do, but we got to have the farmer in one hand and then to take care of the needy in the other hand. So we need the food stamps, but more importantly, we need to bring younger generations in. And that's where my 1890s land grant uh, program comes into fair play. 19 African-American land grant colleges and universities, they're producing. Um, this is just a short time, but I do want people to, to tune in and see us working. But I will tell you this, there will be no turning back on SNAP. We're going to strengthen agriculture, not weaken it. Mr. Chairman, one last question before we run out of time. Uh, do you see a case? There was 400 farm and ag groups last week wrote a letter and generally appealing for greater funding. Can you make a case as the ranking member on the House Ag Committee to, to, to see more money in the baseline for a 23 farm bill? Absolutely. And I hope the Budget Committee and people will hear our cry. And you mentioned it out front when you introduced me. It's all about the money. And if we don't, if we're not able, this has got to be the biggest farm bill in terms of adding funding and take off all of this stuff about cutting SNAP and all that and get to the real issue. And that is we need to put our money and resources into saving these farms, enriching the soil, doing all of the things we need to do, getting our young people into our great land grant colleges and universities. It saved the South after the Civil War. That's when Tecumseh Sherman went to President Lincoln and said, we got the land, we got agriculture. We need the education now. And that's when they put land grant schools in every one of the southern and border states. And then 
And then when uh, Plessy Vergus Ferguson came along, separate but equal, they put him in the African American schools. And here's the beauty of it, Jeff. Yes, sir. Every race, every color goes to these schools. It is a beautiful story. And we're going to put $100 million there and make that scholarship permanent. And we're going to get the money so that we can get them to those farms who need them, small family farmers. Congressman, thank you so much for taking time to be with us today. Thank you for your service to the country and certainly your service to agriculture. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you. My pleasure, Jeff. Thank you for having me.